Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Adam, how's it going? How is it up in D.C.? How's it going up there? It's good. It's uh, still 100 degrees over the weekend. <laughs> uh, but we, we went out to do kayaking on the river the uh, Sunday, so that was nice. So, you know, trying to, trying to make the best of quarantine life. Yeah. Are you, still, are you all still in quarantine, socially distancing? Or are you finding ways to get out and do a little bit more? How's it working for you? Uh, yeah, we're still we're still socially distancing, and they just did a mask mandate for outdoors uh, earlier last week. So, uh, and everyone's pretty much following it. But you know, restaurants you know still have patios open. It's really nice now that they've kind of adapted. So yeah, usually where there's street parking, they've kind of blocked it off, and the restaurants have been able to put tables and patios oh. on there. So. You know, it's and I always like that because that means there's less cars on the road right. anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, they've been doing good. All right. Well, I'll let you and Chike take away with movie views. Sure thing. So I saw a movie called Animal Crackers that just debuted on Netflix. And as I was researching the movie, it originally came out in China in 2018 and was produced in 2017. And it's a computer animated film um, about a family of uh, people that work with the circus and this uh, husband can get access to these animal crackers that turns them into different animals. And then he can just ch eat another character to change it to an animal and then he can eat his human form to turn back to himself. Uh, so it's, it kind of follows that, that theme. It is definitely a kid's movie uh, through and through and overall I would say I'd give it an okay rating if you have children definitely check this out uh, they'll like it the animation is definitely not at the Pixar or DreamWorks level it's very uh, it's it's not bad but it's you're used to kind of better animation and this is a little bit different the most surprising thing about the movie is they have a huge cast of uh, famous actors doing the voices so Danny DeVito uh, Sylvester Stallone, Ian McKellen, uh, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, just to name a few. So it's an interesting movie in that aspect because you get to hear kind of famous actors that we've known for so long uh, voice different characters and they're all in one movie. Uh, but overall, again, it's on Netflix. If you're looking to watch something with the kids, check it out. It's not, again, the same sense like where you get kind of that adult humor mixed into your kids movies like uh, Pixar and DreamWorks does so if you're just looking to watch it uh, as an adult I would say this is an easy skip um, and that's been it in the movie sense I have been catching up on Perry Mason the new HBO mm. series and yeah that's a good one uh, yeah, you know we, we we were gonna we were trying to wait until it was done before we tried to watch through it but we said oh we'll just watch a few episodes and of course we uh, get right through all of them and watch <laughs> yeah yeah we watched last night's episode uh as well so yeah it's really good you know again uh, it's uh, in the time of just looking for something new and interesting to watch uh, perry mason hits a lot of the marks and uh for anyone that aware it does follow the story of the famous uh, the famous lawyer but this is like before he became uh, the famous perry mason and like his upbringing and um, takes place in the 30s and Highly recommend. Uh, definitely, mm -hmm. if you have HBO, I would check it out. So I would say this Perry Mason does for the old Perry Mason what um, Robert Downey Jr. did for Sherlock Holmes in the movie. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's that yep. good. I agree. Check it out. It's HBO. funny enough, too. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. was signed to play Perry Mason in this in the show and then with the way timing worked out he couldn't do it but he's still a producer on the show so i'm glad that he didn't though yeah I'm yeah glad that he did matthew riss or rice or however you say his last name does a great job uh yeah, he and does. i think robert downey jr right now it's just you watch him and you're still gonna think iron man so I, i'm really <laughs> glad that we have someone else kind of taking the role yeah i probably wouldn't get uh sherlock holmes out of my head if i saw him in that yeah role. that's yeah. fair yeah so I'm glad he didn't take it. That's good. I'm glad you're watching that. Because I, I think about you when I come across good series and stuff. I think about you. I'm like, Adam would really like this. Oh, yeah. You got to keep, keep me posted because we're always looking for yeah. something new. So I saw three films. 
Um, one is called Dark Places. Now, this is an older movie. This is this actually came out in 2015, and it's based off of a Gillian Flynn's novel, um, Dark Places. And Gillian Flynn is the same person that wrote Gone Girl, which was a, a fabulous movie, if you don't remember what Gone Girl with mm -hmm. uh, Ben Affleck. Um, this Dark Places stars Charlize Theron, uh, Nicholas Holt, and Chloe Grace Moretz. Mm -hmm. And this is about um, a young girl whose family um, was massacred and she was the sole survivor. I think she lost a mother and two sisters and the blame was placed on her brother, her older brother. And he actually went to jail for murdering the family. And um, in her youth, she had been receiving uh, donations and that's how basically she kept afloat and was able to financially uh, sustain herself into her adult years. And I think there were a couple books even written about the murder, which she uh, profited off of. And the money's running out and she has no skills basically in life because you know she's still traumatized over the murder of her family. And she comes across this group and they're called the True Crime Solvers. So it's basically a bunch of geeks that go around solving crimes and they basically embrace her. And it's almost like a, like a Comic-Con kind of sense the way they travel around the country and they speak at places and she's starting to get payment for her input on um, this fandom that, that around the crime. And so basically she sits in these forums and they question her about things and she gives them answers. And they're basically running in away and solving the crime. So they come up with these new leads and they want her to talk to her brother to get more information, which she hasn't talked to her brother in years. And they start to get these new pieces of evidence that possibly point to a different direction who the real murderer could be. It's very interesting. And I was drawn to this movie simply because I'm, I'm really on this Charlize Theron kick right now ever since the old guard. And um, in real life, Charlize saw her mother murder her father. And, and, and let me correct the murder part. In self-defense, she murdered her father. Her mother was being attacked by the father who beat the mother regularly. He was an alcoholic. In this particular time, he attacked both of them with a gun. And the mother got into a scuffle with him. She retrieved the gun and she shot him, and which you know, that was his demise and Charlize witnessed the whole thing. And me knowing this information, I wanted to see this movie because I, one, I never saw it before. And I wanted to see what kind of performance she would give, being as though this subject matter is kind of close to her real life subject mm -hmm. matter. So I just, I just wanted to check it out and see what it was all about. And it, it was pretty damn good. Like I said, nice. you know, Char Charlize Theron is pretty good when it comes to the projects that she picks and which she, you know, wants to lend her talents to. And again, she produced this movie as well. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I didn't even know about it. It came out in 2015. It's called Dark Places. Nice. And uh, the next film that I saw is on Netflix. It's called The Remix Hip Hop Times Fashion. And this talks about the hip hop influence on the fashion industry and how it influences even today's looks in fashion as it relates to the hip hop culture. And some of the star players that they talk to, uh, they talk to Dapper Dan, they talk to April Walker, they talk to Kirby Jean Raymond, and they talk to Misa Hilton. And if you don't know who Misa Hilton is, any bad boy video that you've ever saw, anything like from the 90s, with the bling bling era, Misa Hilton probably styled it. Dapper Dan, if you don't know who he is, you can go all the way back to Grandmaster Flash, Run DMC, any of those hip hop artists from back in the day, Dapper Dan styled them. This was very educational in the sense that when you see things on a magazine now and you look at the fashion and you admire it and you, you wonder how did they come up with that? Nine times out of 10, it came from hip hop influence. If you can go back to the early, um, early 80s and late 70s, you'll start to see Dapper Dan's influence in the fashion industry and how some of the fashion houses took his ideas and started implementing them in their couture wear. And 
yeah, some lawsuits have been, you know, happening. And they actually, Gucci wind up, fast forward, and Gucci wind up getting him to come on as a consultant. And I think Misa Hilton at this point is a consultant for MCM. That's how ingrated they are into the fashion culture. Definitely check this movie out. It was, it's a yeah. great documentary. He, and if I remember correctly, I could be wrong though. Is Dapper Dan, he's the one that kind of innovated the whole all over pattern thing, right? Yes. He used to take like old fabrics or old uh -huh. bags or whatever and create suits and mm -hmm. uh, track wear out of it. And yeah, kind he, of, he would, yeah, he would get swatches of pattern. Know, for, yeah, he would get swatches of pattern of like the labels, label houses, like you would get a pattern of Gucci and he would take scrap pieces of leather and sew it together and create a jacket. So therefore you would have a Gucci jacket, but it wasn't really a Gucci jacket. It was just Gucci material on a jacket. And eventually over time, mm -hmm. Gucci started adopting that style of their own for their own couture lines. And um, Dapper Dan called yep. them out on it's it. so interesting. They had, to, they had to respond to it. So they had to acknowledge his presence and they asked him to come along and be uh, part of the, the, the creation team, which I thought was really, um, ingenious you should definitely check it yeah, out it's, it's very educational um i learned a few things and i want to shout out my friend bevy smith you look so good in the documentary mama uh keep up the good work i hope you do more stuff like that i like seeing you in that light uh and my last film is uh john lewis good trouble uh this film was directed by dawn porter and it was produced by someone that we all know miss erica alexander you don't know who Erica Alexander is, you know her as Max on Living Single, or you know her as Cousin Pam from The Cosby Show. She actually helped bring uh, this documentary to light. Man, we lost a good one when we lost John Lewis, man. He, he was out here fighting the good fight. And uh, yeah, I see you jumped back on, Stephen. Did you see it? No, I didn't. I want to see it, though. I do want to see it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it follows his career from the beginning, which I didn't know that this man was that young, standing up for equal rights and voter yeah. rights. He was only like 17, 18 years old. He, I think he said he was like 14. He when started he when he was 15, 14, 15 years uh, old when he started. Yeah. And when he, and did, he, he did the March on Washington, he was the youngest speaker at 20. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, he was telling the story about how he wrote Dr. Martin Luther King and he wanted to get into college and they didn't accept him. Yeah. And he wrote Dr. Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King my, told him, to come on over, come see he me. Said he sent him, he sent him a, a, a two-way, uh, a round trip bus ticket to come yeah. meet Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he met him and he became part of his entourage. Yeah. So at, at any point in time in history, when you look at photos and you see film and you see um, Jesse Jackson, Andrew uh, Young, and Martin Luther King, you also see a young John Lewis yeah. on the side. Like he was a civil rights leader. And the thing and about activist. it, all of them, you know, Martin Luther King was considered the old head. At, yeah. At his, at and he was in his 20s. Early 30s. He was in his early 30s. John Lewis was only 20. <laughs> so, I mean, for them to do <laughs> accomplish what they accomplished, yes. from the March on Selma to the March on Washington at such a young age these weren't old and that and that, that and that whole walk across the edmund pettus bridge john lewis arranged that that was his yeah. his whole that was his organization yeah. he did that and that's at why that's why when they 18 when, 19 that's why today when they did the um with his um you know his body they went through that they, yeah they did that bridge they did that bridge yeah the bridge. And, and the thing was so the the, the bridge is named after a ku klux klan member yes and um um, John Lewis, he didn't want them to change the name because he said he didn't want them to forget history. Right. But now that he's passed, everyone's saying, no, he needs to be part of that history. We need to put change into his name. Yeah, he's the one that bled on that bridge. He had yeah. his head cracked yeah. on that bridge. Um, I'm not going to hold you. <laughs> I cried a little bit on this documentary because it touched me. It touched me in the sense of how things in his life went full circle. They came yeah. full circle for him. He was able to see some things um, come into fruition. Mm -hmm. um, he said that, this is the part that got me. He said that uh, when he had a conversation with Barack Obama, Barack Obama told him, he was like, it's because of you that I am here. 
Yep. He was like, never underestimate your greatness. Yeah. Your greatness and your support put someone like me in my chair that I sit Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Which is very true because the main reason that uh, Mr. John Lewis fought, it was for voter rights. He yeah. wanted everyone to have the whole, equal rights to vote. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was his whole thing. So if you're wavering about voting or you think voting doesn't change. Is that on Netflix or is that on, what's that on? It's, it's a direct release. So it's, okay. uh, I, I do believe that it's going to be released on CNN because it is a CNN film. Yeah. Uh, I do believe it's going to be released on CNN, but it's, it's an early, uh, early release. It's an early stream. You can watch it on Amazon. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, Amazon has it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good. So definitely check that out. I think this is going to win some awards. This, mm -hmm. this documentary is going to win some awards. And let's just speak about documentaries right now. Do this whole coronavirus quarantine time. Production-wise, it's so much easier to do a documentary than it is to do a feature film because you can actually, if you're ingenious enough, you can do a great documentary um, from snippets and pieces. You don't necessarily need to do uh, any live action or any new filming. You can take old footage if you're yeah. a great journalist and create a great documentary. So shout out to all the documentary filmmakers uh, for kicking out such great content because there's so many good documentaries out there mm -hmm. now. There's another good one on Netflix, which I'm still in the process of watching, so I'm not going to review it yet. But Fear in the City, definitely check that one mm -hmm. out. It's about New York and the mob. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're, I'm going to shout out The Shy, which we had another good episode on Sunday. It's just getting juicier and juicier every week. Um, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is another documentary film. Or, or docu-series on HBO. Definitely check that out. I've talked about that before. And um, Skin Decisions. That's a new one that I got into on uh, Netflix where they show you the before and after with plastic surgery. Oh, yeah. And their whole angle is not to use the scalpel. They don't really want to do any cutting on anyone. Sometimes they have to, but they, don't, they prefer not to. And mm -hmm. they go into the psychological behind plastic surgery and some of the procedures that people want done and why they want them done. Um, it's very good. Definitely check that out. Most definitely. Well, guys, as always, thank you for letting us know what to spend our time and sometimes our money in this day and age on. And uh, have a great week. We'll talk next week, okay? Absolutely. All right. All thanks right. a lot. Right back after this. <laughs>